Good morning. We are going to begin the second part of our March art lessons. It's Mrs. Sentner from Art Class at Oak Meadow Elementary, and I am so grateful to be with you guys today. Thank you so much for continuing to do your art while we are doing remote learning or distance learning. And if you haven't watched the learning video yet about our artists that we will be working with today, please click in the link below in the comments. There's a link to the learning portion so that you know about our artist. Then come back to this video to actually do the lesson. So we will be doing art um, inspired by Caleb Sinchok today. And this is the piece that we will be doing. So I am going to have on my iPad one of his, um, this is his Instagram page, Art by Cinch. I'm gonna have, whoops, I'm gonna have him right here so that I can see it for my inspiration while we're learning. And this is the piece that we will be doing together for fifth graders. Any grade can do them, but this is the one that I set out for fifth grade. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my sample piece aside and we will begin. So you need to have all of your supplies set up. You always wanna have a clean workspace when you're doing watercolor art. You wanna make sure that you have all the supplies out and use whatever you can find from home. If you weren't able to pick up the supplies that were handed out last week, then use what you have. If you have your own watercolors and watercolor paper, that's fantastic. If you don't, use whatever you have, that's fine. Markers, colored pencils, crayons, you can do a mixed media, multimedia piece of art. You could do it tearing it with paper. Just use this as our inspiration artist and then go from there. And I do again want to thank John at Azel Art Supply. He gave us about 200 of these core watercolor dot cards. And when you open this up, I want you to pull this piece of paper out. This is a nice piece of watercolor paper. And I would like for you to set that aside. And after you have learned Caleb's style, then I would love to see everybody do a butterfly on here. Just sketch out a butterfly. I have one here that I sketched out on this piece of paper. I'm not sure if it will show up very well on here. I can do it darker, but just sketch out a butterfly on here and then do a bit of art inspired by Caleb on here and then post it and then we can do, I'll do mine darker. Remember when we sketch, we really do not want to press hard, but I'm gonna make this a little bit darker just so you guys can see it on here. So if you could do a butterfly with this piece of paper and paint and fill in with your own creativity inspired by Caleb Sinchuk, that will be our artist for fifth grade, and post it, then we can turn this into a really cool um, mural or piece of art with all of your butterflies showing hope and excitement during this time that we're trying to keep each other encouraged. And so I'm gonna put that aside. And then this is the watercolor dot card that John at Azel gave us over 200 of these. Just take the piece of parchment paper off and put it aside. And this will be the color palette what we will be working with. If this isn't the color palette that you received, I found out yesterday that there were two different color palettes. Just use whatever colors that you have, mix together colors until you get what you like and do your own version. Don't worry if it isn't exactly the same as what I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready to go. If you do need art supplies and you don't have anything at home and you wanna order, give them a call. They're a local art supply store and lots of artists go there and I'm sure they could put something together for you just for pickup. So, all right, I'm gonna set that right there so we can mix our colors in just a minute. The first thing that we need to do is tape our paper down. So take paper and I just use anything like the back of a legal pad. I have, anytime I have a piece of cardboard like this, I just save it so that I can use it when I'm doing watercolor. I can tape down and then I can be working on multiple projects at once. I don't have to wait for a while to have my paper dry. All I have to do is just pick up another piece of art that I'm working on 
and get back to work on that while this dries. But here we go, we're gonna tape off. So take a piece of tape, either masking tape or painter's tape. There's a product called Frog Tape that's good. Um, I just use regular old masking tape that you can get anywhere. Um, even freezer tape works fine. I just wouldn't use scotch tape or duct tape. Make sure your fingers are clean, that you've washed your hands and you don't have oils on your fingers because that will make your water repel against your paper in a way. And then we're just gonna press this down, especially at the paper edge. And then turn your paper. We want to tape it down. And what the tape does is that when your paper gets wet, it keeps it from getting wavy. And it makes it dry flat again. So you don't end up with very wavy paper. And I like to have this crisp edge. Because then once we peel up our art at the end, we end up with this beautiful matted looking edge around our art. And it looks great. So... This is how watercolor artists tape down all of their art. So it'll take care of your paper and keep it nice and clean on the edges. And then at the very last part, it also helps us to have a little bit of a spot to sign and date it. So, okay, last piece of tape. If you have a chance to go and look up Caleb on Instagram or on he has some teaching sites. He's got some really great stuff coming up. I think he's even going to be in the Watercolor Summit teaching about gouache, which is the still a watercolor-based paint. But it has like a chalky base to it. Okay, I just need to look and make sure that I have my paper up enough that you guys can see it on my table like when we're in the classroom. Okay, so here we go. The first thing I want to do is take my pencil and there's a very small horizon line here. I'm gonna use my tape to angle this up a little bit so I can see. Okay, so we're gonna do our horizon line. So I'm just gonna start, most of it is paper. We just have a tiny little horizon line space. So probably about an eighth of the paper. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna press a little harder so you guys can see, but remember when you're sketching, you want to keep your pencil lines light so only you can see them. So it doesn't have to be exactly like what I've done. It doesn't have to be exactly like what Caleb has done. This is an inspiration artist. It doesn't mean we're trying to copy him exactly. And then I'm done with my pencil. And the next thing we're gonna do is make our watercolor swatches and samples so that we have these varying colors that we can work with during our art. So I'm gonna set this aside and put this in front of me so you guys can see me mixing colors here better. Okay, so grab a paintbrush. I think you guys might have gotten flat paint brushes from our stock at school. We didn't have a lot of um, paint brushes. We just pulled from what we had in the classroom to send them out to everybody so everybody could have a paintbrush, but you do not have to use that paintbrush. You can use your own. We just wanted to make sure if you didn't have one. Um, so if the flat brush doesn't work great for you, then certainly grab whatever you do have. Um, any paint brushes are fine. So I'm gonna leave that here. I'm gonna try to use this round brush. Okay, so I always have two jars of water. I have one that I'm gonna rinse my warm colors in and one that I'm gonna rinse my cool colors in. And the reason that I do that is so that my water doesn't get muddy. Like in the classroom when we're rinsing water and everybody's sharing one or two containers of water at the tables, it all gets brown and we don't want to have our water become brown because then every time you rinse and go pick up, pick up more paint, it's going to mix with that original color and just make it muddy looking. And we want to try to keep our colors as clean as possible. So the first thing we want to do is do some test swatches. So I'm going to do my warmer colors first. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet and I'm going to come in here and start to just test out my colors just a very tiny bit. Get some water on here 
and test out that color. Then I'm gonna rinse my brush really, really well, really well, and come in and do my next one. This is so you can see that what you look at on that dot is not exactly what the color is. Then this next one with this magenta color. And then I'm gonna move into my cools. I've got a purple and a teal. So rinse in your cool jar. And the great part about this is they even have these set up on the color wheel properly. So you have an orange and blue. They are the opposite colors. If you mix those together, complementary colors become like a brown or a black color. Purple and yellow. And then this is a green shade. It's called green gold. And this is magenta, which is more of a red shade. So red and green across from each other on the color wheel will turn brown. So these are all the complementary colors. And we will use that in order to make some darker colors that we're gonna need in our art. I also don't really like the way that this is. Or not. Okay, so whatever supplies you have, whatever paints you have, just have fun with this. You can do it over and over again. So we're gonna start some mixing of colors real quick. So the colors that we want to mix are going to be um, getting us more of a lighter shade of blue that we'll be able to work with. So I'm gonna pick up some purple here and start to just drag my brush gently across my plate to pick up the paint. I'm not touching that darker dot of paint, the thicker part of paint, because I want to conserve it. The more that I rub across it, the more that it's going to get used up, and I want it to make it all the way through to the end of my painting. So I picked up quite a bit of purple there. I'm going to keep just moving my brush gently across the edge of the plate. Now I want to pick up some of this teal. So I'm gonna get some water on there and then not really gonna bother the actual dot very much. Watercolor goes a long way. So you can even go outside like the plain air painting is um, P-L-E-I-N-A-I-R and get outside, that's the French word for open air, outdoor painting, and you can go outside and paint. Now I'm gonna start mixing these together just to get more of a lighter shade of blue. So that's still really purplish, so I want to add more blue to it to lighten it up some, but still keep that bright, beautiful, vibrant color that it is. I don't want it to get muddy. I'm gonna add some more teal here. So as you're doing your videos, just remember that you can pause anytime. This isn't gonna be like class where we have such a short hour to finish up and everybody's rushing at the last minute to get finished. All right, there's a good blue and I might keep that over there a little bit darker. You can back up by double tapping on the left hand side of the screen to back up. Okay, so that's the first color I want to mix, but hit pause and take your time and don't worry about trying to finish up as fast as I am. Hit pause and stay calm. Now the next thing we want to mix together is some purple with some magenta. So I'm gonna come pick up my purple again and get it on my plate. The reason I love using this white plate, I have a bunch of them and I work on them all the time. I have one that has a lot of paint on it like this and then I can clean this surface if I want to. I don't very often. I just keep mixing colors together until I get the colors that I want. But on white, I can see what color it's going to turn out like. I don't have to use a test strip on a piece of paper, but if you want to use a test strip, just get a little piece of paper like this, and you could test out your color at full capacity, and then rinse one time and come and join that in. 
you can see how it's going to flow. Then come here with it more water. The more water that you add, the lighter it's going to get. So you, then you can see all the variation of color that you have in this from the darkest to the medium to the lightest shade. So, and I love the way watercolor will move like that. It's so beautiful. But this way, I don't have to use a test strip. I can actually just drop it into my plate like this. And I can see the quality of the color, that it's nice and bright. Then I'm gonna come rinse again and pick up my magenta, put some water a little bit on there. I don't wanna, I don't wanna keep rushing over the top of the paint itself. I'm just going to drop water on top of it, let it rush off the sides And then I can start mixing these together to get a lighter, brighter purple because he has some really good bright shades of purple in this, not just dark ones. So we'll get a medium purple, not such a dark purple. So I'll add a little bit more magenta. So see how clear my water staying when I mix the cools and the warms together? So if you do like a yellow and blue and it becomes green, then you would definitely rinse it in your cools. But if you do these two together you and mix them, it becomes a red, then you can put that and rinse it in warm. So stick with the warms in one jar and the cools in the other, and that will help you to have. So the other great paint part about painting on a plate is that if this dries, I can mix it back together again. I can pick it back up again. If I need to go take a break for a while and do my homework or study, or if you guys need to do any of that, you can come back to this easily and pick it back up again. That's what's so great about watercolor. And the last thing that we're gonna wanna mix together is purple and yellow so that we can get a darker black color for these areas. And it's gonna end up drying down here, which is completely fine. We will, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I just use my brush, like a thirsty brush, picking up all of this paint here. And I like to just rub it off on the edge. Sometimes I'll even put some up here so I've got the true color up at the top lip and let the pool part run down. So that, and then I'm gonna come pick up some yellow and rinse my brush in the lighter one a little bit. Come pick up some yellow. This is a super bright yellow, which is gonna be great when we're putting this in. Alrighty, so here I go. I'm going to show you how we're going to get this darker color. Mix those together and then it becomes this darker blackish brown. Add some more purple to it. So I cannot wait to see your art. We really want to try to continue to keep our fun community going. And at the end of your work, post online your picture, either on Instagram or Facebook or both. And use the hashtag. There's two of them. One is Saddle Up Mavs and the other one is Rooted Oak Meadow. So you'll do the hashtags and post your art online and then we can all still encourage each other. And don't be like, oh, mine isn't as good as so-and-so's is. That's not what this is about right now. We are just creating and having fun and you can use any medium or any supplies that you have. All right, so now we've got some base colors mixed. I have somehow succeeded in getting purple into my magenta and I don't want that. So let me get that out of there without wasting very much paint because that will change the color of my magenta and I don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to push my plate aside. I have those colors ready. Even though they're separating out, it's fine. I can mix them back together when I need to. 
So I'm putting my supplies here and bring my paper back. And I'm gonna need to stand up and look and make sure that you guys can still see everything I have out here. So we might have to move this over a little bit. I love that this is just like we're in the classroom and you're looking at everything from overhead. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to need to do is get our paper wet. If you don't have a big brush, we're gonna have to improvise and use some water and a paper towel if you need to. So there you go, there you can see everything. So that's one option is you just wanna use clean water. I'm gonna use this soft watercolor brush here just to get my water on my paper. That's all I ever use this brush for is just to put water down on my paper and I just grab a clean jar of water. If all you have is a paper towel to do this with, then just fold it up and get this one smooth side, not the two side, get a smooth side of it, and then you're gonna just very gently drop water on your paper. Don't scrub. We don't want to ruin the texture of the paper here. We want to keep it from pilling up like it does when you overwork it. So leave the paper alone and just start to add water. So I'm gonna go all different ways. I'm gonna go left to right and top to bottom. So you would do that with your paper towel if you don't have a big brush so that we make sure that the water gets in all the grooves. You can look at it from an angle to make sure and you'll start to see your paper get a little bit wavy and that's fine, that's what the tape is there for. It holds it still so it won't crinkle up while you're painting and make big ridges. It might make some small ridges, which is cool with this piece of art because it actually has places we need some ridges. So if it makes them, it will end up falling into that space, which is kind of cool. Okay, now we're gonna have to work quickly while our paper is still wet. We're gonna do a technique, wet on wet, wet in wet. I hear people call it different things. I call it wet on wet because I'm putting wet paint on wet paper. I want this part down here to be a little bit more wet because it's gonna take me a while to get down there. Then I'm just gonna put my brush that I use just for water back in my jar and I'm gonna to move to the next step. So very quickly, just follow along with me. We wanna get these things done fast and dropped in. So I'm gonna take this lighter blue that we made earlier, and it's pretty thick. I'm not gonna need it to be this thick, so I'm gonna start moving in. This is gonna be our background wash, and we want it to be you can add a little bit more water if you need to. Don't scrub, just use very light strokes back and forth to drop in this paint. If you need to pause, you can, but you just don't want your paper to get dry. Then I'm gonna rinse my brush and move into grabbing some of this teal color. So we come into the middle portion of the sky and drop that in. We're gonna let them mix together a little bit and just pick up some more color. I wanna have it look more like clouds. So I'm dabbing my paintbrush as I go along. And then we're gonna move into, I may add just a little bit more color off on the edges. And then we're gonna move into this background color of this lighter, lighter, lighter magenta purpley color that's gonna come in along the sides here. And I'm doing them in little humps, like little clouds, just dabbing my brush up and down. You guys can do that too. Add lots of water to this color before you come drop it in. So it will be very faint in the background. We just want a nice background wash layer, putting this wet in wet. And this magenta purple color is only on the left-hand side. 
I'm going to come down about there. On the right hand side, we move into more of the yellows. And I want there to be a lot of white in that. So I'm going to put here we go. Okay, this area is kind of staying whiter. And I'm going to mix this. It's too yellow. I want to have it. And I'm not going to touch those together because they're going to turn brown if I touch them together. And this is just my background spot. If they do touch, that's okay. Just don't mix them. I'm going to spread this here with water. Leaving this bottom part lighter. If I have to pick some up, draw off your brush a little bit and then just swipe across and that will help pick up some of this paint. If you want it a little bit lighter, you don't want to have pools of water sitting there. Some of them are okay, like I'm going to like what that's doing and what that's doing. So we're going to let that start to dry a little bit. I might add in some more background blues up here at the top, not too much water. Now that this has started to darken up, go back up to the top again. Drop in some deeper color. Everything in this piece of art is like darker coming into the center lighter. So you want to stick with that pattern when you're painting your piece, not to put too much color in the middle. I'm just going to keep pulling in these sections of clouds. And continue on. Layering them. This is such a fun piece of art. So come over here and layer some in. Humps. You can dot it and bump it around so it won't be, I can put a little stream of clouds that are darker in right there. So if you have the slideshow presentation or Caleb's Instagram page, you certainly can come and have it in front of you to look at like when we usually have our inspiration piece up on the board in the classroom. Mostly, I'll usually want my piece up on the board, so I like the way that's moving around like that. Okay, so just keep working from top to bottom. Adding in some darker paint as our base layer. Okay, I sure do miss having you guys in class. I am so, I will be so happy to see you all again and be back together again. I'm very grateful that we were able to continue doing class this way. Okay, I'm going to try to get some more now that this is drying a little bit, get some more of these humps into these clouds like he has. Not have them spraying out so much. I'm going to stop with the purple for a minute and let that spread out some. And then I'm going to come down here to this one. And I'm going to start working again with this magenta and purple color. Start to get some of this. It's a wonderful inspiration piece. I hope that most of your fifth grade teachers will participate in the art. So I hope that they will also log in and do something that is very relaxing and brings a lot of joy and inspires you guys to continue doing art too. Miss Tapia, Mr. Garcia, and 
Mr. Macias always are so involved in doing our art lessons and that makes it even more fun. Okay, so I'm gonna stop with those colors and then move into some of these oranges. I might mix a little bit of my orange and yellow on my paper here. I don't know if y'all can see that. Let me move it over a little. So just bring some of this out here and mix them together a little bit and start to bring in I'm not going to touch those together yet. I'm just going to start to bring in some of these little mountain pieces that are nice and bright and let them move along and come up here and start that same thing. I want that a little bit more orange. So come in here and start to do your little mountain ranges or sky. They look like mountains, but little sky mountains. And I think that's too bright right there. Just to get some of that colorful background and then a little more orange. Mix that with a little bit of pink. That's good. Gives it a little bit of a more defined edge. Okay, these are looking really good. I hope you guys are enjoying doing this. It's very relaxing and very therapeutic and calming. So get some lines in here. It looks a lot brighter when you're first painting it, but it will end up blending in very nicely to your paper. So I'm gonna need some darker coming in up here now. I really like what this is doing. You could have a very simple set of just a watercolor pad and then a set of the um, watercolor. This will go a long way. You could probably do a couple of pieces of art with it, but then to get into some of the travel sets and go out and do some plain air painting, sit on your balcony or in your backyard and add in some of this darker purple. Start to work that in while this is still wet. I'm gonna leave that more like that because it looks so neat to work this in. I'm just dabbing it in. I know when I do that, that makes all of you guys do the dab. And then a while back, somebody told me the dab was not in anymore. And then y'all started doing it again in class. <laughs> so you'll have to let me know in the comments, is the dab in or out right now? It seems to come back and forth. Okay. For about a year, I don't think I even said the word dab in art class at all because everybody in the classroom would do the dab. <laughs> okay, guys, so let's get this purple dropped in. This is so much fun. With the paper still wet, it's going to blend in really, really well. I'm just dotting. If you want to practice this technique on a sample card, I think we sent one of these home in the go home packs that you could practice doing these techniques yourself. I have learned a lot of these little techniques from different artists throughout the years, just watching them and what they do. Okay, this I would like to have it be a little bit darker. I'm going to pick up a tiny dot of that black or brown over here and then add in some more purple to it. Super fun to mix in these colors. So I like in his art that I lost my train of thought. I like in his art the way that he mixes all of these colors together. I added some more water to it just to smooth it out a little bit. And I'm just dabbing up and down so it makes that bleed come down really pretty. You can, I don't want a very straight line. So here we go again with coming in from the outside here. It's 
really nice to watch it all mix together. I'm going to come back up here with some more of this darker color. Along the top edge of my cloud. So this plate is super fun. I can just keep mixing all the way around until I get colors that I like. And I should, as long as my paper stays wet, I can keep adding in. And the really fun part about this is being able to feel like you're outside, even though most of us are pretty stuck inside right now. We can do some art that feels very inspired by the outdoors. Okay, I'm going to let that dry a little bit more as I move into just the base layers underneath here. I'm going to put some teal in here. And let that dry underneath. And then I'm going to add in some of this purple, just straight up purple. I want it to be pretty dark just so it's bright. And once it dries and I paint the darker black color over it, then it's going to look really good. Okay, I'm going to give that a minute. Sometimes there's some discovery in all of this. Like I'm going to try to see if I, what I can do to get this even more black because it's not as dark as I would like it to be. I really miss having you guys in class. I cannot wait to see what you post online. And I hope you've had fun doing some. I like that a little bit better. So whatever you do to mix this color over here and make it darker, you might end up with just a soup of different colors that you've mixed in. But anything we can do to get it nice and dark because we're going to need all this area to be dark. It's hard to do with these very, very bright colors. Maybe if I add in some of this teal, and I can also double time here. I might end up adding all the colors together to get these bright neon colors to be, nope, that lightened it up way more than I wanted it to. Trying to get this dark is a little bit difficult. That turned it a different color. So just keep working on your little soup over here until you can get it as dark as you want it to be. Just try not to dab into your paint dot very much and it will last you a very long way. Okay, I'm going to add a lot of purple into this now. There we go. It's going to have a purple base to it, but it's going to be very dark. So I just kept adding colors until I got it to as dark as it's going to show up on my paper. So it won't be completely black, but it'll have a black tint to it. Shade. Okay. So now that this has started to dry a little more up here, I can add more purple to it and try to get this just some... I'm just dabbing my paintbrush in some different areas that are still kind of wet. That was not as wet as I would have liked it to be right there, so I'm going to help it out a little bit. Just 
be real careful adding in some touches of deeper purple up here. Make sure to pause the video anytime that you feel like you're getting, I'm getting too far ahead of you. This is fantastic that you guys can do this from home. You can do any of the lessons that we've posted kinder through fifth, not a problem. You are welcome to do them. you nice and busy making art. It's very therapeutic and relaxing to make art, especially when you're not worrying about copying somebody else's style, just being inspired by their style. I'm not really liking what happened right here on the bottom. It's going to make a sharp line, so I'm going to try to use my paper towel to dab in here and get it kind of puffy clouded along the bottom. Pick up some of that water. Okay. Then I'm gonna move down into these orange and yellow areas where there's some harder lines. Pick up some of this. Now I can start to move in here where this has dried a lot more and they won't mix together too bad. And make some more of these mountainous looking clouds. I can drop in some orange into that and let it move through wherever it would like to go. Come in here and make some of these beautiful lines and then carry it out like a mountain range of clouds. This would be fun stuff to even sit at the table with your family together and all of you paint. And I want to have some of this be a little more pinky orange. I'm going to take some orange and a little bitty bit of pink for some of this down here as I move in here. We're going to have to let this dry a little bit, and in the essence of time, for me, I'm going to have to use a blow dryer. It will have a little bit of a noise to it when I get to that. This is super fun. Okay, so now what else might I like to add in? Probably a little bit of this first layer of this darker purple. So I'm going to start up here, down here. I don't want to start there because it's really wet still. Not liking at all that I didn't catch that that was bleeding down right there. Let me see if I can press in and pick it up with my paper towel to some degree. You can use a paper towel right along the edge of your tape and just come along the edge and try to pick up any moisture that's built up along the tape edge. And then you can use a clean edge again just to try to pick up that color I don't like. Watercolor has so many great little tips and fun things you can do like this to help fix a mess that you've made. Okay, so now I'm going to use this darker color and I'm just going to start coming along my line that I made for my horizon line. Doesn't have to be exactly like Caleb did it. And get their first layer of dark coming along here. 
and then just swipe across. We want to still see some of that blue showing through, especially more in here. So we're going to let that first layer go in like that. Might drop in a little bit more of the dark part just to give it some help. are doing great. Just pause or double click on the left hand side of the screen to back up a little bit if you need to. We're gonna end up with a beautiful piece of art inspired by Caleb Sinchuk. Okay, I'm gonna come down here like this. Get some of this down here. Okay, there we go. I'm really liking what's happening with these clouds. It's a lot of fun. So I'm going to need to turn my dryer on really fast. I'm going to pause my video so and I'll come back on. It shouldn't sh I should be able to clip them together for you guys, but Okay, here we go. We are going to move into the next portion. I'm going to grab a brush that's a little bit thinner than this one if you have that option. You could also try this with some, um, even when I get into the smaller details, try using something like a toothpick with a pointy tip. So as some of these little details are coming in, Try to find some tools if you don't have smaller brushes that you can use. So first I want to start painting my hot air balloons. So we're gonna do like a question mark and a backwards question mark to make our shape. So I'm gonna start with my warm colors and I'm gonna do each of the warm hot air balloons. So this one's kind of a red color. I need to mix together this magenta and bring in some of this orange over here and I can just mix it on the card. And it's kind of in the middle left. So I'm gonna do a question mark and come down. It's got a few little humps available on the top of this one that I can see. And then just come down. My brush is a little too wet. So just get your, this one is the only one that seems to have pretty defined top to it. And then you wanna paint a very small, tiny little basket at the bottom. You need to add in a little bit more color to it you can drop that in on one side so it looks like the light's hitting it more on the other side. So much fun. So take your time and have some good detail. Okay, I'm letting that kind of flow. If you want to pick up any color where it's just dry your brush off and then swipe along one side of it a little bit to make it a little bit lighter and it looks like the sun is coming in and hitting it from that side. So I'm going to make one that's just straight up orange now. I'll come and do this one down here. question mark and a backwards question mark and join them together. Always think of art in terms of different shapes. It helps. And then I'm going to soak up some of this paint. I put too much. So as long as it's still wet, you can work with it. Okay. 
I'm going to try to move that paint over to that side. See if I can't get some of it to stay over there. And then I'll make my tiny little basket. So we have a good perspective going on here that we've got a balloon that's closer to us and larger. That balloon looks like the wind is blowing it that way. I'm not going to mess with it, but it definitely looks like it got picked up by the wind. Then I'm going to go come and do this one last one and make it a little bit more orange than red. I don't want my brush to be super, super wet. Off here in the distance, I'm going to do one question mark and then a backwards question mark. Almost looks like a little heart. Then I can make a hump in the middle of that for the top part of the balloon. So think in terms of shapes as you're making your balloons and then make sure to make a basket. I'm going to drop in a little bit more of that magenta color on the left of it so it can bleed into the right. All right, then I'm going to move into my cool color balloons. So I have this one that's kind of a blue, so I'm going to re-wet this paint that I used before. Maybe add some more teal to it. here. Make a heart and then a hump in the middle of that and fill it all in. I think a heart is a better description of that shape. And I love you guys, so it makes me think of you. I miss you very much. Seeing your beautiful faces walking down the hall. Make a little basket. Make it really small. If you don't have something with a small enough tip when you turn your flat brush that you got sent home for fifth grade, turn it on its side if you can. If not, grab something like a toothpick or something that you might be able to get a sharper edge going. We have to work with what we can. So okay, now I'm going to do this one over here. I got something on my brush. Okay, so we're going to do this one over here. I'll make a heart. And another heart side, and then a hump in the middle of that kind of helps me get a good shape of a hot air balloon. Took me a minute to figure that out. Dry my brush off and pick up some of this paint. And then maybe one more over down here that's small and kind of purple. I wish that one, oh, and I need one up here that'll be more magenta. I wish this one was not blowing to the side. Maybe if I do a second layer on it, I can kind of fix it. But it looks like it's blowing in the wind like he's going to be the fastest. So I'm going to come down here. Heart, make a hump at the top. Just take your time. Good 
close attention to this little detail because it's so small. You want to make sure it looks good. Cannot wait to see your art. There's one more that's a little smaller and a little bit more magenta to it. So I'm probably going to go with this lighter purple here. That I already had. The plate is awesome. You can even leave the plate and come back to it in a couple of days, and it's going to have you can re wet it and use the paint again. If you're not going to be using it for a little while, put a paper towel over it just to keep dust and lint from falling in it and then getting in your paint and your paintbrushes. purple color. And then make the little basket. Okay, so as we finished each one, then we're going to go back over it with another layer just to give it some depth and perspective. So I'm gonna come back to my original, almost reddish orange and bring some of that together. Maybe I can kind of straighten this dude up while I'm at it. Let's see. I'm not gonna paint the whole thing do some kind of shading across here. Went too far and got in my basket. So you can always dab it with a paper towel to pick that back up again, but hopefully I can settle up on the Looking like it's heading off in another direction, <laughs> blowing away in the wind. I'd love to know what things you guys took for granted that now you really appreciate. I've had a lot of those little moments where I've realized things that I took for granted or didn't appreciate enough and One of them is getting to hug people and say hi and to see people and be in relationship. So I'm going to do this one now and just add some more depth to it. Just tapping that in. I'm not doing it too rough. kinds of things have you guys taken for granted before that now you will be very appreciative of and always remember after being at home for so long. We are almost finished. I get a little bit more orange on this one. Even our dog, I'm sure you can hear him, is so tired of being cooped up in the house. 
We've tried to get out for walks with him more, and it's fun in the park back here at Harburger. We see a lot of people from school, and it's great just to see some faces. I actually saw one of our fifth grade artists the other day walking in the park. Okay, and then I'm gonna go with this pinky orange color for this last one over here. I think, oh, and then it's not really my last one. I have the one up at the top. Um, tomb wet, so let me just smooth that out some. Alrighty, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of purple up here. I think I used this, didn't I? So I'm almost done with just adding some texture and shade to this umbrella hot air balloon. All right, now I'm gonna let that dry up a little bit and I'm gonna come pick up some of my really dark purple and put in another layer on the bottom. So I'm just gonna come down from here along I don't have to go exactly where I was. I like having some different texture to it. I like right there, it looks like there's a little phoenix rising in my art. So I'm gonna to try to leave him there because he happened on accident and I think he's really neat looking. Okay, and then just dry brush this. Knocking in some darker color. It's just some very dry brush swipes with this thicker paint that's down here at the bottom. Can y'all see that little bird looking right there? It's pretty cool. I don't want to mess him up. And I still want the blue to show through some, so I'm swiping around it and just making some different texture layers. Okay, now I need a very fine tip, much more fine tip than this one. If you need to use something like a toothpick, you can just be careful that you're <clears throat> when you use a toothpick, just don't press too hard into the paper. But I'm going to pick up some of this paint and then come around and start to outline. I'll come all the way down to my basket. I can outline my basket. Put some little hashtags in it down to my basket up around and down to my basket if you need to use a toothpick for this that's fine I put some little shading right there little lines just to make it look like it's got texture to it come pick up some of this darker paint again try not to get in my purple paint with my arm I'm just out I'm gonna come up and around, I went way too far. And down to my basket. Up around and down to my basket. Around and down to my basket. Over and over again until I have my hot air balloon set. I can try to repair that boo boo I just made by adding in some shading lines on that side. and outline my basket. Make sure to hit pause if you guys need to as we're going through this. Let's see if I can dab that up a little bit. There we go. Okay, last part of our painting is this detail work. I'm bringing it down to my basket. Each of the cords that hold on to 
and then make my basket here. There we go, there's another one. Uh-oh, I didn't make a basket for that poor little hot air balloon. He's basketless. So I'll make one with this darker color. Come down, come down, join them all in, do a little bit of shading. And just a couple more. Come down to my basket, down to my basket. Here we go again, down to the basket, down to the basket. And two more to go. Down to the basket, down to my basket, and outline it. And one more. Down to my basket, basket. All right, so we've done our hot air balloons, and now I just need to put some sprigs of grass in with this darker color. When it's bigger like this, it gives the perspective that you're standing right here and all this is closer to you and then the hot air balloons are gonna be off in the distance. This is such a fun lesson. So happy. Okay, then we're gonna do our guy. Now this guy, he's kind of standing, looking off in the distance. So just very carefully, either with a very fine point paintbrush or with a toothpick and just dot it carefully. I'm going to do his body first. I'm going to do his shoulders, kind of like a pear shape, and fill that in. Then I'm going to come here and make another kind of circle almost, and then split it off to some legs. Join these sides up a little bit more. Then I'll do his head. It's very hard to do like a teeny tiny little profile, so I'm going to try to do his head. I need to bring this up a little more for his shoulders to join up with his head. And I'm just going to kind of go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and come down just to make it look like he's looking that way. We can fill this in a little bit more. And darken it up a little bit. So this is probably my least favorite part of doing this is trying to do a human form. Kind of like a silhouette of a guy standing there. Okay, my guy is kind of short and stubby. So there we go. So the last thing I want to show you how to do is how to peel the tape and then sign your name. Really important that after you've done all of this work that you flourish your name and make it absolutely beautiful. So let me show you how to peel the tape first. So grab the part that's on the top. So that will be this piece. You want to do yours when your paint is completely dry. I just want to be able to have it in this one video. So I'm going to get my tape going by pushing it down at an angle as I slide it over. Slide it over. 
I don't want to rip straight up. I want to push it down and at an angle so it peels off very easily and you get that nice, crisp, clean edge. So remember, after this, get your little small square of paper that came with your paint and sketch out just a basic butterfly form and then do a piece of art inspired by Caleb Sinchok. You can put that, the sky part all in the background and the butterflies inside the wings or just get creative and then show us that too as you get it finished. And maybe we can make one big mural out of all of our butterflies when we're able to get back together or post it online and maybe we can do a digital one. Your fifth grade teachers are really good at that kind of stuff. Okay. It's okay that my cardboard's peeling. I really don't care about that. I just don't want my white paper to peel. Okay, so now I am finished with this, and the last thing I want to do is sign my name. So I'm going to take a pencil. This is why I left the bottom right corner a little bit lighter. And signing with Flourish is just lots of free... And then I'll put the 32020. So I want you to sign your art. So once you've finished, take a picture of it, have your parents take a picture of it, and post it online. You can like this video and then go into the notes and you will see where you go and um, click to post on the Oak Meadow PTA page with the hashtag SaddleUpMavs and hashtag Rooted Oak Meadow. And posting this will keep all of us connected, encouraging ourselves and encouraging our friends. You guys are awesome artists and I can't wait to see your work that you've done.